Tonight, we remember Peter Jennings, the journalist, the leader, the American institution. Here in the South Vietnamese capital of Saigon. In Jackson, Mississippi, in the occupied West Bank. From St. Peter's Square in Vatican City. No one did it quite like Peter Jennings. 50 years in broadcasting, an enormous loss, an amazing legacy. From ABC News, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening, I'm Charles Gibson. Peter Jennings once began this broadcast, his broadcast, by saying we have seen the news and it is us. Tonight, the news is Peter. Would that it were not. Our friend and colleague, the anchor of this broadcast for 22 years, died last night. His was a courageous and relatively brief battle with lung cancer. Peter died at his home here in New York. His wife, Casey, his two children, Christopher and Elizabeth, and his sister, Sarah, were with him. They told us today that it was remarkably peaceful at the end. From so many parts of the country and indeed the world today, people said they felt a special connection with Peter. Viewers, leaders, and presidents. A lot of Americans relied upon Peter Jennings for their news. He became a, a part of a, the life of a lot of our fellow citizens and he will be missed. May God bless his soul. Former President Clinton said that Peter had helped him understand the world. Every time I got a question, it was his, a question formed out of the experience of his whole life. And it made me wish all other people in that position could have the benefit of that kind of rich experience. Peter's longtime competitors, Dan Rather and Tom Brokaw, talked about their mutual respect. I think Peter had very exacting standards. He set the bar very high for ABC News, especially with international coverage. No one owned the Bosnia story quite the way that Peter did. I, I envied him that. He made a great personal commitment to that story, and it showed every night on the air. We were also friends, and, and I'll miss him. But I fear that the news and people who depended on Peter Jennings to bring them the news will miss him even more. People remembered Peter today in two parts of the world where he spent much of his career, Great Britain. Peter Jennings, ABC's news anchor, has died aged 67. And the Middle East. Rudy Giuliani, the mayor of New York during the 9-11 attack, said that like all those watching that day, Peter was in pain over the destruction wreaked on his beloved city. But he soldiered on and did so with compassion and eloquence. Here at ABC News, we gathered this afternoon to remember the man who was such an inspiration for us. And as we know from the response today, so many of you. It is difficult for us to start talking about Peter in the past tense. But Peter was so many things. Talented, demanding, relentless, elegant, at times utterly brilliant. And I can tell you he would have groused that that last one is a bit over the top. And yes, long before he was officially an American, he had become an American institution. Good evening, everyone. We're going to begin tonight with... It was promises. the program the that he tonight. loved. Good evening. We begin tonight the with... The program that he anchored by himself for 22 years. Each night, he chronicled the events of our lives. But he was far more than just a news anchor. It could take a very long time before Canatra resembles anything like its former self. He was the Jenny, consummate ABC reporter. News. This will count as one of the worst attacks since this war began. And what makes Sarajevo so angry at this point is that high overhead all morning, American fighter planes have been circling. Sarajevans wish those fighter planes would drive the Serbs from the gun positions which dominate this town. His final trips overseas to Iraq point up his extraordinary gifts as a foreign correspondent. When Saddam Hussein faced his accusers for the first time, Peter was one of only three reporters in the room. A very small group of witnesses, Iraqis and Americans, including three reporters, had waited only a few minutes when Saddam Hussein walked through the door. Hello? Two minutes! So too was he an exacting editor. We who appeared on his broadcast were peppered with questions. Clarity was demanded. Seldom would a report air on World News Tonight that had not been subjected to Peter's critical eye. I get up every day thinking, that something is going to happen in the world that I didn't know about yesterday. And I have the opportunity to pass some of that on 
to the audience. He was tough on us, tougher on himself, and he would not miss a big story. So when we learned an upper respiratory infection kept him from covering the tsunami, and then when he could not cover the death of Pope John Paul II, we knew it must be serious, and it was. I have learned in the last couple of days that I have lung cancer. Yes, I was a smoker until about 20 years ago. As always, Peter had educated Smoking himself out. on the subject. I've been reminding my colleagues today, who have all been incredibly supportive, that almost 10 million Americans are already living with cancer, and I have a lot to learn from them. Peter believed his voice would improve. He believed he'd beat this disease and get back to work. He could not imagine life away from work. And we could not imagine the newsroom without him. I would cover anything. I'm an incurable fire engine chaser. Journalism and broadcasting were in Peter's DNA. His father was a pioneer in Canadian broadcasting. Impatient with school, Peter dropped out of high school and was soon reporting for the Canadian Broadcasting Company. Had hey, you plan on voting next year? Well, I don't know. I haven't decided on it yet. Do you know how many political parties there are in Canada? No, I don't. No, do you know the names of any of them? No, I don't. All of nice. He always regretted his lack of formal education and never seemed to realize, as we all did, that most often he was the smartest guy in the world. I'm fascinated by everything. There's just too much going on in too many places that I just daren't miss. When the Canadian CTV network launched its first national newscast, Peter Jennings was made anchor. He was all of 24 years old. Was it your boyhood ambition to always be in broadcast? Without question. It was. In fact, I, it worries me now because I think that if I hadn't got into it, I couldn't have done anything else. Covering the Democratic National Convention of 1964, Peter caught the eye of ABC. Now from our ABC studio in New York, Peter Jennings. Up three, queuing. Tornadoes usually kill slightly more than 200 people a year. And ABC made him its anchor in 1965. He was then all of 27, and by his own admission, not ready. Coming out on two or three. So ABC sent Peter on the road, giving him what he called the free education of life, covering civil rights. At about 1.15 this afternoon, a lone Negro came down and tried to enter the Lester Maddox cafeteria. Vietnam. Behind me is the emergency wing of the third field hospital here in the South Vietnamese capital of Saigon. The Palestinian problem won't be solved, even Israelis admit. In 1972, he established the first American television news bureau in the Arab world. And like so much of Saudi Arabia, underneath all the sand, there is oil. I lived in the Middle East for a long time, and I, the one thing I learned after Those living there the was that there is no one absolutely essential truth for all people. And that every time I look at a coin, I instinctively want to look at the other side. Peter Jennings is inside the village. Let's go to Peter now. When the terrorists took hostages at the 1972 Munich Olympics, Peter suspected immediately who those terrorists might be. If I were to guess at the moment at which of the commando organizations this group is to come from, I'd be most likely to narrow in on a group called Black September. He was right. The late Rune Arledge was then president of ABC Sports. We happened to hit right where Peter lived. And when you're talking about Alpha Ta and Black September and these things which were alien concepts to most Americans, and certainly to most of the people working on the Munich Olympics, uh, Peter knew all of that. I'm Peter Jennings in London. By 1978, Peter was back for a second career anchoring ABC's nightly newscast as foreign news anchor with co-anchors Frank Reynolds and Max Robinson. I think we need a little other ion time of for the U.S. senators in Moscow. Um, little Beirut, maybe that'll go in the, in the Middle East ion. What about the Salinger piece? World News Tonight with Peter Jennings this evening reporting from Washington. ABC's evening news program had been renamed. Peter never let any of us forget. The program is World News Tonight. Good evening from Macedonia. Good evening from what is about to become the new South Africa. Good evening from Paris. Peter was always at his best covering the President big story. Bush. Someone actually reached up and handed me a small piece of the wall that they had chipped away. It's those small moments that make up this extraordinary day. The triumphs. Challenger, go with throttle up. And the tragedies. We are going to stay on the air until NASA tells us what it knows. Perhaps most memorable, his days of virtual non-stop broadcasting, taking us through the days of 9-11. It's hard to put it into words, and maybe one doesn't need to. Both trade towers, where thousands of people work, on this day, Tuesday, 
have now been attacked and destroyed with thousands of people either in them or in the immediate area adjacent to them. There is simply no way to accurately describe the emotion this evokes in people all over the world. And it this affected Peter emotionally um, as well. I checked in with my children and it, uh, who are deeply uh, stressed, as I think young people are across the United States. And uh, so if you're a parent, you got a kid in some other part of the country, call them up. Live from around the world. And the symbolic events, as when Peter broadcast for 25 hours straight, welcoming in the new millennium. Happy New Year to you all across the country and across any other country that happens to be watching us. We have Those are the moments Peter shared with the nation, with his audience. What you didn't see much was his humor and his sense of fun spoofing a stand-up. ABC News, Cairo. One twelve, eh? Do you want to do another in the, in, in, uh, what are you doing? Letting his hair down at a convention. I may be... Or going through one of the promotional announcements that were, well, they were not his favorite thing to do. On World News Tonight, we don't have the vaguest idea of what we're going to do, but we'll try to make it as interesting as we can. We'll use a lot of stock film, some of which you'll have seen before, but we'll try to run it backwards or sometimes just going the other way across the screen so that you will think you're getting something truly fresh. I hope you'll join us. That was long. <laughs> that was long. <laughs> that is the Peter Jennings we at ABC knew. The Peter Jennings, who quietly became a U.S. citizen in 2003, adding it to his Canadian passport. He was giddy with excitement when he did so, wanting to show solidarity with those who had come through 9-11 and grateful to an adopted land that had given him so much. In his last broadcast four months ago, Peter's voice was failing. So was his body. He seemed surprised at how much news of his illness just revealed that day had affected everyone. Certainly it's been a long time, and I hope it goes without saying that a journalist who doesn't value deeply the audience's loyalty should be in another line of work. To be perfectly honest, I'm a little surprised at the kindness today from so many people that's not intended as false modesty, but even I was taken aback by how far and how fast news travels. Finally, I wonder if other men and women ask their doctors right away, okay doc, when does the hair go? At any rate, that's it for now on World News Tonight. Have a good evening. I'm Peter Jennings. Thanks and good night. Peter's family last night said it best. He knew he had lived a good life. And we'll get to some of the other news today in a moment. Peter would argue we should have gotten to it sooner. Later, we'll talk about Peter's bond with children as our special broadcast continues with some of the music that Peter loved. day, drop after drop, you test your blood if you have diabetes. But what if the information you're getting isn't right? If you don't code properly, your readings can be up to 43% off. 43%! And that's just a waste of all those little drops and all your efforts. So Bayer developed the Essentia Contour Meter. There's no coding needed, so you get the information you need from every single drop every single day. The Essentia Contour from Bayer. Covering grays has never been easier. Your Excellence Cream has this professional root applicator in every box, so you can easily comb grays away and get beautiful, even color from root to tip. Excellence Cream from L'Oreal. What will they think of next? Hard burns back. Deal me back in. You mean out. Tumsy X can't keep acid from coming back. Choose the chews that work fast and last. New Maalox Antacid Barrier. Fast relief plus a long-lasting protective barrier. New Maalox Antacid Barrier. There was other news around the world today. The major story today was supposed to be the scheduled landing of the space shuttle Discovery early this morning. But the space agency, NASA, decided to delay Discovery's reentry by a day because of low clouds over the landing strip at Cape Canaveral in Florida and the potential for rain. 
If the weather is not right at Cape Canaveral tomorrow, they will try to land Discovery at either Edwards Air Force Base in California or the White Sand Missile Range in New Mexico. And we are told the astronauts have several days of food and other supplies in case they cannot land tomorrow. In Baghdad, it was not violence, but a blinding sandstorm that forced Iraqi politicians to cancel important negotiations on a new constitution today. Sand coated the city with a gritty haze. Shops closed, flights were canceled, and hundreds of people had to be hospitalized with breathing problems. In New Mexico, President Bush signed the first overhaul of the nation's energy policy in a decade. It would give energy companies billions in loans and tax breaks to explore for oil, expand refining capacity, and develop more nuclear power. It will also extend daylight savings time by four weeks to save electricity. The bill sponsors acknowledged it would have little impact on energy prices in the near future. Today, those prices hit new highs. The government said a gallon of gas now costs on average $2.37, up nearly eight cents just this week. And oil prices briefly hit $64 a barrel before settling just below that, ending the day up $1.63. When we return, Peter Jennings remembered up close and personal from his colleagues here at ABC as our special broadcast continues. Me? I'm a problem solver. There's a problem, I solve it. One problem I thought I'd solved? My acid reflux disease. I thought it was just bad heartburn. But when I went back to my doctor, he told me over time, stomach acid had damaged the lining of my esophagus. He prescribed Nexium. Said I needed more than heartburn relief. My esophagus needed repair. Nexium healed the erosions in my esophagus. And one prescription Nexium pill a day keeps me healed and relieves my heartburn. So I don't just feel better, I am better. My doctor did say other serious stomach conditions may still exist, and headache, diarrhea, and abdominal pain could be side effects of Nexium. Talk to your doctor about Nexium and find out if a free trial is right for you. Even the best problem solvers need a little help sometimes. Nexium, the healing purple pill. If you can't afford your medications, AstraZeneca may be able to help. As each of us sits here today, there is a voice asking, how would Peter have done it? Would he approve? The bar he set for himself, first and foremost, and for each of us, was high. Sometimes it seemed impossibly so. So today we asked some of our colleagues, and it was not easy, to talk about what it's been like to work for someone who was so driven to get better at what he did, and to make us better as well. What I'm remembering in this moment is how compassionate and concerned Peter was about people who had problems. And I know this because he would constantly call me and say, Tim, can you help me out finding help for this person? Or can you find a good doctor for this friend? Uh, incredible concern and, and attention to the details of people who he knew and some he didn't even know personally who were in trouble. When I went into a war zone for the first time, which was Afghanistan, <coughs> um, he called my parents. To let him know I was okay, and you know he's the anchor of the, you know, of the, a broadcast that 10 million people watch a night. He's got plenty of things to do, and he took time before the show to call my parents and say your kid's all right. We'd come back and tell him things, and immediately we knew we'd get a skeptical response. Are you kidding me? That couldn't possibly. No. Are you serious? And suddenly tell him the one thing in talking out the story that would make his eyes widen a little bit and said, that's interesting. Anytime we went to do a story with him, you know, uh, his knowledge of the place, his knowledge of the names of even local warlords. But for me as a Lebanese, uh, I, was, I was in awe of somebody from Canada that can fly into Beirut and has all this knowledge where many, many Lebanese would not have such grasp and such knowledge as he did. When we were about to do something live, Peter would talk in generalities about what we might do, but he would never tell me the questions he was going to ask. I never had a clue. Uh, and his response to me was, I don't want you to become stale, McWethy. 
uh, and stale. I often was caught completely off guard. He loved it. I hated it. Peter never liked the ties I wore, and he would literally call my wife and say, you've got to buy him better ties. <laughs> he didn't do it out of meanness. He just thought, you know, I should just look a little spiffier if I was going to be on World News Tonight. Peter asked me if I'd come to Baghdad with him, and I thought about it, and I told him uh, I'd come and just don't, you know, I'm not going to be racing to the, to the really nasty scenes. He said, okay, and then he said, you know, we've got those nice big flak jackets, and we'll find one that fits you. We always took pictures on the road, and he uh, gave me one with uh, a, a little, uh, his, his classic odd pen signature at the top. And what he wrote was, uh, uh, ah, the brave and the not so brave, do you feel better now? The great Gorbachev interview two weeks before the coup. Before the interview, uh, Peter had brought a Louisville slugger bat and a Raggedy Ann doll for Gorbachev's grandchildren. Number one, uh, they struck up an instant relationship. And number two, Peter thought about things like that. He really did, he really did think about things like that. He was um, playing with my two-year-old daughter in the swimming pool, and he was just having a great time with her, and all of a sudden he looked up and he said, you know, I love this. I loved being a father. You know, he, he just, and he did. He loved, he, he got goofy with them. He was supposed to give a toast to the Constitution and a toast to the nation, and he had gotten done with the toast, and Justice Scalia turned into him and said, not bad for a Canadian. And he actually said to Scalia, can you keep a secret? I actually am an American now. Becoming a, a citizen was something very, I mean, uh, we always take it for granted. Um, and it was so meaningful to him. This is a um, pocket-sized US Constitution, which Peter carried in his back pocket and became obsessed with the idea because Peter had such a romance with American history. And so we ordered about 100 of them. They're everywhere. They're in his car. They're in his briefcase. They're in his office in, um, and in his back pocket. When we come back, Peter Jennings with some of his youngest fans listening to the children. ordinary toothbrush, Oral-B has created the Professional Care 8000. It pulsates and oscillates to loosen plaque and sweep it away. Teeth get twice as clean and your whole mouth gets healthier. Why use anything else? The Oral-B Professional Care 8000. Discover delicious citrus and berry flavors in a very surprising place. New Centrum Silver Chewables with heart-healthy nutrients that emerging science suggests may help reduce the risk of heart disease. The best of Centrum Silver in new citrus berry chewables. Burning, itching, but the pain's the worst. I should have used Preparation H Cream. Burning, itching, plus maximum strength pain relief on contact. The most complete Preparation H relief ever. Preparation H Cream. Pain relief on contact. Arthritis sufferers have had enough bad news lately. Here's some good news. Aleve is the number one pharmacist recommended pain reliever for arthritis for the sixth year in a row. Ask your doctor about the good news. Ask your doctor about Aleve. Finally tonight, the youngest audience. Former President Clinton went out of his way to tell us today that he always marveled at the remarkable rapport Peter Jennings had with children. Children Peter met in the special town meetings that he did with kids, here in the newsroom or on assignment. Peter never underestimated their intelligence, and he was always invigorated by their curiosity. Here's Peter's longtime friend and colleague, ABC's Bill Blakemore. Before this was a private interview. Yeah, I know. Well, who are these characters? I don't know. Why don't you shoot them? Get a cutaway of them. That's a boy. <laughs> Peter a boy. got on famously with children. Can I have a question? Yes, sir. Are you taking well, Are you taking some time away from your job to watch some people? No, I'm taking time away from my job to talk to you. Thank you. Valuable time when I only did it because of her. He'd come halfway down to their level if they'd come up to his. You know, I think you're the first interview I ever, ever did in all my life when the person I wanted to interview was sitting on my lap. 
Yeah. How old are you? Five. This was a story about the influence of Tiger Woods. Can you finish a sentence for me? I like golf because... I like kicking the ball. Peter showed us how children could see and say things at least as clearly as adults. He used that to help adults listen. In Bosnia, Peter found a boy named Eki Fortu and recognized immediately that this child could help communicate so much about the war. What do your mother and father tell you what the future is going to be about? They don't uh, talk about that. How come? They don't know what to say. Mm. They don't know what to tell you about the yes. future? Yes. What do you think about the future? Would you always stay in Sarajevo? No, I think uh, in, in Bosnia never were stopping. Really, really stopping. Uh, all, I think, very much times this war will. Mm. And I think when I uh, will bigger than now, uh, maybe I go in America, maybe in England. We say sort of with conventional wisdom that children are really smart. Well, they are really smart. And they have seen and experienced what's happened in the country this week, and we want very much to know what's on their mind. He worried about children in times of national crisis, broadcast Saturday morning specials in which he listened carefully, answered their questions thoughtfully. It helped us all reflect on what was happening. What's been bothering you most since the war began? The other people that died so far. It's tough, isn't it? Every day. It's tough to be young and not understand sometimes what adults are doing. Yes, what's your name? Something in Peter's approach to children told them he really wanted to hear what they really thought. And they returned the compliment. Fantastic. I beg your pardon. We you trying to kill it? <laughs> That's nice. Thank you. Bill Blakemore, ABC News, New York. And of course, there are his own children. Christopher, the poet of the family, recently graduated Phi Beta Kappa from Wesleyan University. Lizzie is 25 and working on the global fight against AIDS. Peter adored them both, and both changed plans to be in New York this summer and near their dad. And his wife, Casey, during the entire course of Peter's illness, she never left his side. She was a pillar of strength. Together they were and are a very loving family. And that is our program for tonight. Behind me is what we refer to around here as Peter's chair, and we thought it only fitting that it remain empty at the end of tonight's broadcast. I'm Charles Gibson, speaking for all of us at ABC News. Peter, Godspeed.